one more. Has President Biden ever been to the southern border? In his life? Yes. I will have to get look back in my history books and check the we, times he's been to the southern we border. We have been looking all morning, and we cannot find any record of him visiting the border as president, vice president, senator, or even as a concerned citizen. Why would that be? I can check and see when the last time or when he may have been. But, but tell me more about why you're asking. Because this is a president who makes a point when there are disasters in this country, like a wildfire or a hurricane, to go and see for himself firsthand what the needs are of the local community so that he can have an informed POV to make policy. Why doesn't he do that? Uh, why doesn't he go down to Del Rio, Texas and see what's going on? Well, first of all, Peter, I think the situation at the border is the result of a broken system. And the president certainly relies on his experience. So whether it was the work he did to address root causes as vice president, his efforts when he was in the Senate to support comprehensive immigration reform, a steps that at a time were done, being done and worked toward in a bipartisan way, something that uh, certainly we think should be the, the case today. He uses all of his experiences to inform how he governs, how he approaches challenges. And certainly he looks again at the last four years and the, the separation of children who are ripped from the arms of their parents as a way he does not want to proceed. So all of his experiences and his time in office, whether vice president or senate, uh, inform his approach to issues. Go ahead. First of all, what does going to the border do? Does it make you an immediate expert because you've been there in person? Are you not able to understand a concept without being there and seeing it? Is there no other way to gather information today in September of 2021? If only we had all of the world's information right at our fingertips where we could learn about something without summoning the old horse and buggy and taking the 12 day journey down there ourselves. Yeah, maybe one day. And beyond that, let's be honest here, here's what will happen if Joe Biden goes to the border. It immediately legitimizes the only story that Republicans insist on talking about day after day, month after month, year after year. And look, we get it. Republicans don't want brown people coming into the country. But the GOP has been crying crisis at the border since literally for as long as I can remember. There has never been a time in my own personal living memory that there wasn't a crisis at the border. And why do they always seem to sprout up just before elections or during democratic administrations? Because it's an animating issue that Republicans use to whip their base into a frenzy, claiming that gangs are pouring across the Rio Grande to rape your wives and sell drugs to your sons and traffic your daughters to change the demographics of this country, to erase your heritage. This issue fits perfectly into Republican strategy of relying on the politics of fear. And so long as their base is composed of scared white people who buy into it, those people will respond to fear mongering about immigrants. So while most of us understand the purpose behind the perpetual pearl clutching about the border, the fact remains that if Biden actually went there, then boom, Fox's bad faith fear mongering is instantly validated. And of course, the rest of the media will follow suit. And if you think the mainstream media is savvy enough to know when they're being rolled by right wing outlets, then I've got a bridge to sell you. Because let's face it, they fall for it every single time. Republicans and conservative outlets wail about Hillary's emails, and even though there's nothing to it, mainstream media walks right into the trap and legitimizes the completely unremarkable story as if Hillary Clinton committed the gravest sin in US history. Four Americans die tragically in Benghazi, and Republicans pretend that it is the worst stain on this country since its founding. And the media fell for it instantly, which in retrospect is especially stupid considering we're now watching as Republicans allow 2,000 people to die every day from coronavirus while they do nothing because their position is to pretend that vaccines are bad during a pandemic. But sure, I'm sure that four Americans dying in Benghazi was really that earth shattering for Republicans. Got it. What's ironic too about all of this is that the surge in immigration at the border is A, nothing new, it happens during every administration from presidents of both parties, B, certainly not an issue that Republicans, of all people, have any moral authority to speak on after rallying behind the guy who imposed arguably the most cruel and inhumane border policy in US history by separating children from their parents as a policy of deterrence, and C, in part exacerbated by the policies of Donald Trump, who ended $450 million in aid to the North Northern Triangle countries, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. That funding was specifically intended to prevent people from falling into extreme poverty and hunger, prevent violence, and strengthen the justice system, all of which are root causes for those people to leave their countries and migrate to the United States. So by cutting that funding and eliminating those programs, all Trump did was exacerbate the problems that caused people to migrate northward in the first place. 
Every Republican sat idly by while he did this. And now, those same people who cowered at the feet of the guy who allowed northward migration to proliferate are the ones claiming the moral high ground and pretending that they're somehow the authorities on the border. Convenient, huh? And finally, one last point here that gets lost among that very fear-mongering I was talking about. Immigration is a good thing. It is what the United States is built upon. Immigration makes us stronger. We're a nation of mixed cultures and mixed religions and mixed ethnicities, and that is what the United States is. I know that certain Republicans like to think that they're entitled to some white Christian ethnostate, but this ain't it. Immigration isn't our weakness, it's our strength. So let's not pretend here that Peter Ducey is asking this question because he's legitimately concerned as to why Biden won't go to the border. He's just being a good little foot soldier for the right-wing media ecosystem and doing his part to prop up the never-ending narrative that brown people are pouring into your white country to take everything away from you. This issue will be around forever, just like it's always been around. And Republicans will always desperately salivate for any Democrat to go do their bidding for them by showing up at the border so that they can make months worth of news cycles about the only issue they want to run on, as opposed to the issues that actually impact the people of this country. But they can't talk about those issues because Republicans don't pull well on climate, on women's reproductive rights, on raising taxes on the rich, on infrastructure, on healthcare, and so on. And so instead, we're stuck with the never-ending border crisis, brought to you by a media outlet that preys on the fears of its viewers. If you enjoyed that video and you're looking for a deeper dive, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. It's a no BS look at the top stories of the week, along with interviews with the top names in politics, like Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, and more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, click the subscribe link right here on this screen to join the more than 1 million people who've already subscribed to my channel. And and finally, to donate to my Don't Be a Mitch Fund, where I'm raising money for a whole raft of different voter outreach and voter registration groups in the closest states ahead of midterms in 2022, including Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Texas, you can find that link on this screen as well. Thanks for watching.